I usually make my videos at night, not so much in the daytime when uh, the baby is awake. But here we are, and we'll give it a try. So it might be a little bit uh, noisy here and there, and I might have to, you know, pause the video and that kind of thing. But uh, I'm going to give it a try. Um, my plan is to model this film strip projector. Um, I used these uh, quite a bit when I was teaching, even though they were ancient and I used to get teased by my other colleagues. Um, I always liked them because we always had these biology old film strips in the back room, you know, on the kidney or on the brain or, you know, cell division or something. And they, they were great resources and it was, you know, something different than than always, you know, talking or being at the, the overhead projector or at the chalkboard or something. I just wanted to use different technology, even if it was ancient. So I, uh, I got pretty familiar with it. Um, this is... Um, an easy model for um, relative beginners like myself and possibly like some of you. Um, I know I have had uh, beginners coming by my channel watching my, my videos and I do appreciate that. Some people asking me to go you know slower um, and, and so that's what I'm going to try to do now because I am a relative beginner um, I may make some errors and, and flub things up and that's all part of learning, of course. And so we're just doing this uh, for fun without too much pressure. And uh, we're going to get something like this um, as a final product. Um, this is just an open GL render, so I'm not doing materials, just, just the modeling part. Um, but there's going to be, um, you know, extruding and uh, scaling, and beveling, you know, a few different types, a couple different types of beveling, you know, beveling by hand and using the bevel modifier. Um, and a lot of these parts and pieces um, are, you know, important for making more complex models. So it's good to have these uh, beginner-ish techniques um, down. All right, so uh, there's not a lot of detail, but it still will take some time. Um, and and that's, that's it. That's basically what we're going for. Um, so like I say, we might do this video in, in pieces based on... Uh, you know, the, the distractions and stuff uh, and that's totally fine so um, so this is the model that I, I made earlier so um, I'm trying not to put um, images of uh, you know from the internet um, you know in case I monetize this and make 25 cents from it I, I want only my own graphics uh, but of course uh, there's this which I didn't make but this is free so here we are in blender uh, an old version right from the very beginning. This is the opening scene. I haven't changed anything. So what I'm going to do for right, off, right off the bat is I'm going to delete the light and the camera. I'm just going to select them. And by the way, that's another thing um, that I've got my selection uh, set to sort of like Windows um, where I left click to select something. And you can set that stuff up in your in your preferences, wherever the heck that is. Uh, yeah, user preferences. You can set you know, just look that up on the internet how to do that because that's that's a you know a difficult thing right away. So that, I mean, I think I think rotating is the same using the the mouse button, but the left and right click differ. So I've got it set so my left click and shift, you know, and then X to delete. My left click um, is uh, to select something. Okay, so what I do want to do is I want to hit N. Oh, well, what I'll do is I'll actually I'll hit N. You won't know that I did that till I turn my screencast keys on. And I'll just increase the text size a little bit and maybe the mouse size too a little bit. Okay, so now you can see over here what I'm clicking. So N to open the side panel and to close it. So open up N. I'm going to come down here to shading. And that might have been closed for you. Just click shading and go to matte cap. Click on ambient occlusion and then click on the preview here and choose um, your favorite shader. Now that won't show up in the in the render. This is just for, for modeling purposes. Or an open GL render if I just click this right here. That kind of thing, escape to get out of there. The other thing I want to do is go to display and turn off the grid floor. All right, just by clicking in there, turn it off, hit N to close that. So here's what I got so far. So there's my cube, and I'm going to start making my projector. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to hit S to scale, and I want to scale only in the X direction. Let me get out of there. I want to scale on this red arrow. That's the X. Green is the Y. So imagine like a you know your graph, okay? X there and Y there, and Z is coming out at you, going up in the three different uh, dimensions. So I'm gonna, I want to scale this bigger in the X direction. Uh, a couple of ways I could do this, the simplest way is probably to hit S for scaling and then hit the X which will constrain my scale 
just to the x-axis. Now you don't want to cross over there and go backwards, although I don't think it'd be the end of the world. And I just want to make this a little bit more of a rectangle than a perfect square. So that's kind of the size, but I want to work on the base of this thing here. All right, so I don't want it the full height yet. I'm going to squeeze it down so I get this, just this kind of um, height so far. So I want to scale it in the Y direction. I want it smaller, okay, not as high. So I'm going to hit S and Z for the Z direction or Z, and I'm going to pull my mouse in, makes it smaller. I'm not pressing any buttons. I'm just moving my mouse on my mouse pad. Okay, in to make it smaller, out to make it bigger. And it's towards this, here, let me let me bring it down here for a moment. It's, I'm moving towards this center, center spot. Okay, so uh, maybe I want it a bit narrower too, so let's scale it in the Y, but let's do it the other way. I mean, I could go S, Y, and I could scale it like that, in or pull away, out. You know, but let's say it was there and I want it smaller. I could go in <clears throat> to edit mode and select this face and pull it in, but then it's not even. And I'll show you how I got that menu later, okay? Scale it in the Y, just like that. Okay, so. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create this slope region. So I'm gonna go in on all sides, all right, to do that. So I am gonna have to go into, into edit mode now. So I'm gonna hit the tab button and that brings up my my menu for object versus edit and other things that I rarely ever use. If I hit escape and go out of that, now you can go down here and go into edit mode. All right. All right. Now um, I can actually select faces at this point and I'm left clicking to select them. All right. You might be right clicking, but I'm left clicking to select that. I'm going to be wanting to select that top face, but I'll show you if I hit ADD select that. If I do control tab, see it over here, control tab. That brings up this mesh selection mode. You could choose vertex, edge, or face, and that's what I want. You can do that down here, vertex, edge, face, all right? But I find it quicker to just use that. So I want this face, and if I hit seven, I can look straight down on the thing, and I, wanna, I want to scale this in, but if I just start scaling, uh, yeah, that, that is what I want to do. No, it isn't what I want to do. If I scale in the X, I'm going to get these slopes here. I don't, I don't particularly uh, want that yet. I want a, a vertical part, and then I want it to slope in. So let's Control Z out of there. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to hit E to extrude, and then left mouse button to select. So see what it said there? It said E to extrude. Now I've created another poly there, and I'm now going to. Well, I could actually pull it up a little bit. All right, you'll notice this line. So I've created a new section here, but I don't want it just straight up. I want to go scale in the X, pull it in like that, and scale in the Y like that. Okay, now I can hit uh, seven to look at the top. By the way, if seven is the top, control seven is the bottom, back to seven. I just wanted to see that it's roughly equal. So I'm gonna scale in the X a little bit more and pull it in. If you want to do a smaller scale, like let's say I'm going scale in the X and, and it's moving too quickly, you can hold down the shift button and that'll make it move slower. So I just wanted to get that, something like that. Okay, so I've got that piece there. Now, <clears throat> I know that there's gonna be a switch on there, but so I'm just considering the, uh, the angle might not be enough, but I think I'm just gonna go with that, similar to, to this here. So now I want a vertical little section here, and then I'm gonna want it to come out. So to make a vertical vertical section, I'm just gonna hit E to extrude and accept, left click to accept, and pull up the Z, and I've got another little section there. All right, well, now I'm ready to go on and do the top part right here. And so I just want to come out a bit and maybe not, not as much as this out to you know, the full width. It's a little bit and then I'm going to pull up. So let's do that. So I'm going to hit E to extrude. And then because I want it a bit wider, I am going to scale in the Y, pull out a bit. <clears throat> and I'm going to zoom in, scale in the X, I'm going to pull out a bit. I'm just looking at this region here to see that it's roughly equal. Okay, and do I want to come straight? I think I'm going to pull it up a tiny bit so I have a little bit of an angle, and then I'm going to make the top. So I'm going to go heat extrude, and I'm going to pull this up like that. 
Is that what I want? That's fine. It's going to be all right like that. Okay. I can adjust the height uh, later on. But I think that's going to be fine like that. So let's go back to object mode. So I just hit the tab button to bring up that menu. Go back to object mode. But once again, I could go from edit there to object mode and have a look at this. All right. Looking okay so far. Let's uh, let's move down to the bottom. Uh, I don't really have a good shot of the bottom, but I want to do something on the bottom. So I'm going to go back into edit mode, and I'm in face selection. I'm going to select that face. I want to make this a little bit smaller and then extrude it down. So I'm going to use the inset uh, command. I'm going to hit press I, and I'm going to pull in just a little bit with my mouse. I wasn't pressing any buttons. I was just pulling in. Now that may have done it equally or it may not well seven is the top control seven is the very bottom let's have a look at this you can see it's a little bit wider here than here so I want to scale it in the, in the Y a little bit more so I'm gonna go scale Y but I'll hold down shift so I go a little bit slower I'm pulling my mouse towards the middle okay but pull away it goes out pull that way uh, just like that it's not gonna be perfect but that's fine so now that it's all even, the inset command created another poly here, and it's there, but there's no thickness to it. So now I'm going to hit E to extrude, and I'm going to pull down in the Z direction. I just want a little piece right there, and the legs are going to go on at the bottom there. So let's go back to object mode and see our work so far. What we should do is save this. So let's go Control S and call this a Film Projector Projector Video. You might hear my daughter and the, my wife in the background, so hope that's good. When it gets too crazy, we'll take a break. Now, what to do next? Um, let's have a look at the picture. We obviously are going to have to deal with this this beveling here, this curvature, and this region here. I think I'm ready to do the the front part. So let's. One is the front perspective you know, I'll hit five you get to ortho uh, I did this in an awkward um, directions so really the, if this is the front if I press three I'm really looking at the right that's totally doesn't matter it's preference but what I might want to do is I want this a bit narrower I think so I'm going to scale it in the Y I think that might look a little bit better and I'm just going to do a lot of saving. So I am going to create the part that comes out at the front here, this part here, before I start dealing with all this beveling. I think it might be better to do it then. So the way I'm going to do that is go into edit mode, and I need some cuts here in order to pull out that front piece. So I'm going to show you what I mean. Uh, in order to get this piece and have it sort of seamless, I could build this separate and put it on, but there's a hole here that spans this piece and the main body. So I can't just build this and push it on and expect to have a hole here. You'll, you'll see what I mean in a bit when I get to that. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to create some cuts so that I can pull that front piece out. So this is the front right here, and the back's over there. And what I'm going to do is mouse, I got my cursor over the object and I'm gonna go control R and just move to an edge right there you don't see anything but I'm gonna move down to an edge and it's gonna put a, a pink line there which represents where the cut will be that goes lengthwise with the model but I don't want one I want two so I'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel up that'll give me two scroll it again three four scroll backwards you can't go any lower than one All right I want two so I'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel up one and press the left mouse button to accept and I'm going to do that again to confirm that now I've got these lines if I deselect you can see I now have lines here which actually means in the face mode I've cut this the top poly it was one piece before I put two lines now I got three it's done the same over here this is really the piece that I want I'm going to be pulling this out and so let's let's just go ahead and do that. No, let's not go ahead and do that. We gotta do something first because I don't wanna just pull this right out so that it spans this whole front region. Have a look at the picture, right? It doesn't go all the way down to here. This piece here goes about maybe two thirds down. So we need to make another cut. So I'm gonna deselect that. I'm gonna go Control R here. And if I go in the wrong spot, I'll get a vertical one. Just move around till you get um, a, a horizontal cut 
I'm going to click to accept and I can now just pull my mouse up and down and I can move this. Let's position it maybe right there. All right, it's not going to be exact, but let's do that. Deselect. Now I've got all these polys and all these. That's the one I want and it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. Okay, but it does go all the way to the top. We want that. So the way we'll make this come out like a little nose is we're going to extrude along this red arrow in the X direction. E to extrude and now pull the red arrow out. Let me just look at the picture and decide how far to pull it out. It's up to you what you really want to do. So that's how it would go. But there is one more thing. Well, there's many more things, but for the moment, another thing I need to do is I need to angle this upwards. And the way I'll do that is I'm going to switch to edge selection, or I can do that down here, right? See, I'm on edge. There's vertice, face, edge. I'm going to select just by clicking. Now, I'm, by the way, I am left clicking on that, and it's just selected that edge. I can now pull this up in the Z direction, and that will angle it like that. And deselect. Now, you can always go back in and adjust these if you don't like how much you pulled it up. All right, doesn't look like much yet, but we're getting there. So let's go back to the picture. So we got that, that. We can do something else to to this. Um, I mean, it, it, face selection. If I grab that face, I want to make the little indentation here. Okay. So the way I can do that is by using the inset. Um, command again. So I'm going to hit, make sure I can see it, I'm going to hit I, and it already does a little bit. I'm going to pull it in a bit more. Now you may notice that it's sort of inset in the Y, this side and this side, not so much there. So I can pull it down in the Z direction. So I'm just going to go scale in the Z, and it'll pull it down on both sides, this side and this side, until they look pretty equal. Maybe a bit more, scale in the Z. Hold shift if you want to go in smaller increments. Sort of like that, so it's looking good. I'm, I'm setting it up, I've got a poly here. I'm gonna extrude it back. I'm gonna hit E to extrude and accept and grab the red arrow for the X and just move it in a little bit. It doesn't have to be too much. Deselect, let's come out and look at that. So now we can see that, okay? All right, so far so good. Let's save again. Let's start working on the beveling of this thing, the curving. Now, I have found that by using the bevel modifier, which is under the wrench, add modifier, bevel, it may start working well, but not like actually. Something that we should be doing, because I've been scaling things, is you should go periodically, object, apply, scale. Now try the bevel modifier again, and it may work better for you. Now you may think that looks great, but that's not enough curvature here for me. All right, and I can just crank this up and crank this up and it doesn't do much. So I'm not gonna do it that way. Instead, I am going to try edit mode. I'm gonna try to bevel this by hand. Now, should I dissolve some of these faces, reduce, maybe, maybe not. I'm gonna go into edge selection and I'm going to left click and let's try shift alt click, all right? If you shift alt and click, you can select more than one piece. Shift alt and click, shift alt and click. Now, I like to bevel the vertical edges first before the, the horizontal ones. So let, we're gonna give this a try. Now, one thing I should mention, I'm gonna come out of that for a moment. <clears throat> I already did apply scale, or maybe I did rotation and scale. I don't think it'll matter which you choose. Had I not done that, my beveling may not have worked well. And there, so there may be an opportunity to show you that later. So shift alt and, so, and click. Shift Alt and click, Shift Alt and click, Shift Alt and click. All right. I'll consider this thing later. I may or may not be able to bevel out very well. Let's just make a good vantage point. 
Now, this is a manual bevel, so I'm gonna go Control B to activate the beveling, and then I'll show you what to do. So I'm gonna hit Control B, and you see the dotted line there on my arrow cursor? As I pull away, I start to get this. Pull away, and I get this. Pull away a little bit, and start rolling your mouse wheel up. Two, three, four. I'm gonna try four, and I'm gonna press the left mouse button to accept. All right, so that's what I did. So once again, I'll come out of that. Control B, pull back. Don't go like you know that unless that's what the effect you want. You know, somewhere around there. Scroll your mouse wheel up a few times to get a nice curvature. Deselect, come out and look at that. Now part works okay. I may have some trouble beveling this. Let's let's go have a look and see what I could do here. I'm gonna do the, the horizontals later. Let's see in edge selection mode if I could grab that. Oh, it wants to do the whole thing, eh? I just shift clicked on it. Let's try a bevel. Okay, just looking at it like that. Control B, pull back a little bit. Now don't go like that, just pull back a little bit so that, well, I'm gonna roll my mouse up once, twice, why not twice, maybe twice. Let's have a look at that and see what it did. Okay, I rounded that. Now really, I should be rounding this inner line. I'll show you what I mean. It might be starting to get hard to see, but this, this line, I shift select the whole thing. Right there, that's a pretty sharp edge there. Okay. Now I'm moving that by holding my, my mouse button down. If I just do that, I rotate, but if I hold down the shift at the same time, I can actually move the model or the camera or whatever. I'm gonna try beveling this as well. Control B, pull back a little bit. Not so that it goes too far, just a little bit like that. I'll pull, I'll pull just one segment and just make it a bit smaller. Push my mouse up or pull it down. Let's see if that helped. That sort of softened that part a little bit too. So I got the outer edge beveled and the inner but I don't have these, and that might be a bit of an issue later. Now I only got that top. I may want to be backing out of this. Yeah, I'm gonna back out of it for now, okay? Because I wanna bevel the uh, top edges. Let, let's do this. I wanna bevel a whole bunch of these uh, horizontal lines, but I don't wanna do them all together because they have different you know, thicknesses. So I'm gonna grab, shift, I'll grab that one, and I think I'll do that one at the same time. Oh, no, I can't get all that. In fact, I'm going to want this bottom piece as a whole solid piece. So, I'm going to, so this is something you can do sometimes, too. I'm going to select all three of those polys. I'm going to go X as if I'm deleting, but I'm going to go Dissolve Faces. That makes them one, and now I can select it as one. It's easier to deal with. So back to Edge Selection. Let's Shift Select all of that together. I'll do them separately, okay? So I want a small bevel. I don't want it to be super sharp. Control B, pull back, just like that. I'm just gonna put one segment in there. So have a look at that. Just a little bit rounded instead of being perfectly sharp. Okay, back to edit mode. This edge is very sharp, but it's also very, very small. So Control B, pull back a little bit. I'll just put one edge in there. It's a little bit softer now. Okay, now. This is also a very sharp edge. So back into edit mode, shift select, make sure it goes all the way around. Let's bevel this, control B, just a little bit. One, I'll put two in there, like that. Let's check it out. It's a little smoother, it's not such a sharp edge anymore. We need to do that a few more times though. This one, control B, pull back. Let's put one in there. Let's see how that's, um, probably I could have used two, but it softened it a bit. This edge here, and then we'll do the top. Shift select it, make sure it goes all the way around. Let's bevel this edge. Control B, pull back. Oh, there it is, okay, pull back. I'm gonna put two in here, one, two. Let's look at that. It's looking a lot nicer already. 
a little bit cartoony, but you know, let's try the top and see how it goes. Well, you know what? I can dissolve these faces. I think I can. X dissolve faces might make it a little easier to uh, to do things. Let's go to edge select mode and select that whole top there. Now you'll notice it, it breaks here. And that's why I went back. I think I want this and not that. Nah, not that piece and not that piece. I'm going to try doing nah. I'm now shift selecting just individual lines or edges. I'm going to try all of that. I'm zooming in to make sure this piece isn't selected or that. This may not work well, but we'll, we'll try it. I'm going to position it so I can see there, and I'm going to try beveling. Control B, pull back. Um, something's something's funny in there. I don't. Here, I'll show you again. See, you see, I don't know if you can see a piece right there. We don't want that. I think something is selected in there. I just want to see if I get it. Okay, don't get anything in there. Maybe something happened there. If I do that, I just selected again, starting near the front. I just maybe something was selected that wasn't supposed to be. Control B, pull back. One, two segments. Not too much though. Let's see if that worked. Looks like it did. Now I can experiment. Back in edit mode. I can experiment with more beveling. I could certainly do the inner one. Control B, pull a little bit. One segment in there. Maybe like that. Okay, I'm getting bevels here and there. I could cert I should be able to do these two vertical ones or <laughs> angled ones. Control B. One, there's one segment, we'll try one. We'll see if that has caused a problem for me. I don't see one. May not be good topology, but what do I care? Let's see if there's any chance I could bevel just the sides. Well, no, let's see if I could bevel all the way around it, but not that part at the top. Sorry if this is starting to get a little bit crazy, but Let's try it. Let's see if it'll take one without causing a... It's not really visible anyhow. I think that's probably good enough. All right, so I did a couple of moves there that might have gone by rather quickly for you and, and uh, been kind of vague you know you can just experiment you can always control Z out of it or you can stop my video and and if you've done the exact same cuts and extrusions and everything you can try it again and again until it works just you know don't go too much with the beveling save 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 um, let's do some simple stuff let's do the feet on this okay so what we're going to do is I want to bring in a cylinder to make a foot and make four feet on this thing and I want them to come in um, right at the bottom when I, you know, go, uh, you know, uh, what is it, uh, Control A? No, <laughs> Shift A. When I add mesh cylinder, you know, I, I want it to come right in at the bottom, not necessarily in the middle of the of the object. So I'm going to select the object, and in face select mode, I'm going to select the bottom face. I'm going to go Shift S, cursor to select it. And that's going to move the 3D cursor right down to the bottom. I can deselect and come out of the object. The 3D cursor is right at the bottom. So watch what happens if I go Shift A, bring in a cylinder now. Not a heck of a lot of difference. If I scale it, well, jeez, maybe I didn't move the origin. It don't matter at all. We're going to be positioning this. I was hoping that was going to work for us. I'm just going to make it smaller. Let's go top view. Nope, bottom view. Let's move this over to one side and then have a look at it. Press the period key to zoom right in. 
how does that look for the dimensions, the, the, the width of the foot? Let's have some nice big feet. So, it needs to be longer though. So let's scale it in the Z direction only. Scale Z, S Z. All right, and let's imagine that's plugged in there. How would that look? Okay, as the extreme that that can go up to. I would think that's probably fine. So, let's bring this down again and let's do something to make this look like sort of a threaded foot. You know, you'll see. Edit mode, deselect. There's my cylinder. I'm in polygon select mode, that's fine. I wanna add some edge loops. Control R, you get the pink line. Scroll the mouse wheel up as many times as you like. Okay, now accept that, but before you deselect these lines, go Control B and pull to make them a little bit wider like that, let's say. Okay, now I'll go back. Okay, if I did this and I just roll my mouse up a bunch of times, if I accept and deselect, I'm going to be going, oh, God, I can't do anything. I'm going to have to go Shift Alt and click to reselect. And you get the wrong one to reselect all of these thingies, which takes three more seconds. That's it. Once you got them all, like I said, Control B and pull back. Give yourself a bit of width. Don't go too crazy. Go to about there because we're going to be pulling these in. Okay, so they're all selected. I'm going to go E to extrude and accept. I want to scale them in. I want to pull them in, but not in the Z direction, up or down. So I'm going to go scale S, shift Z, means only do it on the X and the Y. And you can see the colors of the axes there. Now pull your mouse in, and it will equally pull that in on all sides. All right, maybe about that much. Deselect and have a look at your work. Looks a little bit like a screw. All right, the thread doesn't go in the helix. It's just just like that. That's totally good enough. Now we could try a bevel, and I can reduce the amount. You know, something like that. What if I put two segments? No, it's too much. Don't need that. So, like that, we could try smoothing. There you go. That looks all right. That'll, that ought to pass. All right, so this, of course, would go up here and it would attach into the body. Now, there's more that you could do up there with a bolt and stuff. I'm not going to bother. Let's just fix the foot on this thing. Now, you'll notice I haven't applied the bevel yet. You don't need to yet. We'll do that soon. So, let's reselect this, edit mode, and face selection. Let's grab that face. And let's make more of a foot on this. So I'm going to hit E to extrude, S to scale, and it's only a poly, so I don't need to con say don't do it in the Z direction. I'm just going to pull it out a certain amount like that. E to extrude, and now I'm going to pull it down in the Z direction like that. And that would make the, the end. But we might as well bevel this as well. We don't want super sharp corners, so go to edge selection. I'm going to grab that edge and that edge, both of them together. Control B, pull back, and give it maybe two segments. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so we have a bit of an issue, and I think it's got to do with the, the beveling there. So I really don't need that. I'm going to get rid of that. Forget that. So I hope that doesn't make it too confusing. All right. So there's that one foot. And I really probably don't want them out that much. I'm going to actually push them into the body. And now, oh, let's save. I want another one over here, and I wanted exactly the right distance because this was created right in the middle. I can select this foot and mirror it across to the other side, along the y-axis to the other side. So select it, add modifier, mirror in the y-axis, deselect x, and I want to mirror across this thing. So my mirror object will be the base. So I'm going to use the eyedropper, select the base, and it puts the other one in. If I'm happy with that, which I am, I'll click Apply. I want to move this um, transform tool, I guess, whatever, right into the middle of this common object. I mean, this is one object. If I move it like that, they both move. So it's one object. So I'm going to set origin to the geometry. It'll go right in the middle of the geometry. 
Now I'm going to cheat and say first, I'm going to cheat. All right, let's look at this from the side, which is really the front view. Yeah. This one. I want to cheat. I'm going to shift D. I'm going to copy these towards the back. I could have mirrored them, but I wanted them to be separate objects. And I'm going to pull these out. Usually the back ones are stable and it's only the front ones you unscrew and you know, to make it longer so you can tilt the machine up. I'm actually going to do that. And that's it. I'm going to select these, select these, and go Control J to join them uh, to each other, anyhow. And I'm, I can go Origin Geometry and put it right in the middle of all of that geometry so I can pull them all out like that. And I can adjust the height and say I want it like that. Okay. Now, obviously, this wouldn't sit on the ground flat like that, it would be tilted up, but I just wanted to show these longer. Okay, so far, so good. Now, what I haven't done yet is I haven't tilted it in. I'm not certain I'm going to do that or if it's going to be just vertical. Um, okay, let's go ahead and put some kind of a, of a lens on this. Now, let's try it this way. Shift A, mesh, cylinder. Oh, and it comes in right there. Say I don't want that. I want it to come in roughly at the front. I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to select this face. Shift, Shift S, cursor to select it. The 3D cursor is right at the front. Deselect and come out. Let's see if I bring in a cylinder, if it's closer to the hair. There, shows up right there. I'm going to scale this uniformly, just like that for the moment, maybe a bit more. And I'm going to rotate this so it faces forward. So I'm going to rotate it around the Y axis. All right, rotate. Y 90 degrees and there it is now it's still a little too wide so I'm going to scale it and bring it down it's supposed to be down around there not, not that far down though. maybe there okay let's pull it out and see how long it is so that's how long it is let's make it a bit longer scale it in the X this way scale X pull away make it longer now it's extruding this way but it's also making it longer inside so if I do it there it's almost good enough let's do a little bit more touch it right there okay the reason I did that is because I want to I want to cut this and make make it look like a sort of a lens that you could turn or push or pull so I'm gonna select this cylinder and I'm going to go into edit mode select that I'm going to go control R to add an edge loop and then accept and I can pull it now wherever I want it I'll put it around there close to the middle okay so I now I'm gonna make this another part of the of the lens so I'm gonna go into face mode and I'm gonna click on this line and go shift alt so if I just do one I just get one poly but if I go shift alt and click I get all of them I'm going to take this front piece as well. So I've got all this front area selected. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller in diameter than this. So it looks like a ring on top of it. Or do I want to make it a bit bigger? It's up to you really what would work. I'm going to make mine smaller. So I'm going to extrude, hit E to extrude, and I'm going to pull in. But I don't want to pull it in the X direction. I just want to pull it in the Y and Z to make it narrower. I'll show you what I mean. Scale S. No, I didn't do E yet. E to extrude and accept. Scale Shift X, not in the X. Notice the colored lines there, blue and green. That means it'll only scale in the Z and the Y direction, not in the red X. I'm now going to pull my mouse in to make it smaller, out to make it bigger. So I want mine a bit smaller. And I'm looking as I do this right here to see the row that is being created as I as I pull it in so I see a bit of separation so if I deselect that now I get this kind of effect and that's what I want okay now this edge is too sharp though so let's go back oops select it and go back into edit mode let's go to edge selection and shift alt click so I get that whole line all the way around it let's bevel that control B and pull back Put one segment in there, deselect, and it's, it'll be the, just the slightest amount of, of softening and catch a bit of light. 
Let's make this look a little bit more like some kind of a lens. So let's go into edit mode and in face selection, select that face. We're gonna carve inwards, but I wanna put a row of polys here so this has some thickness. So I'm gonna use the inset, I'm gonna hit I, and I'm gonna pull in a little bit and, and accept. So this is what I've done, right? I hit I and I pulled in so I have this. So now I can push that in and I'll have this edge, nice row right there. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go E to extrude in the X direction I'm gonna pull it in and I think I'm going to pull it into there and I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna hit I to inset and I'm gonna pull in just a little bit so I get another another row and that might have been too much but I hit E to extrude and I'll pull it in again a bit more and I'm just gonna leave it like that for now or maybe for good. Now we need to bevel all of these edges. So let's grab this inner one first okay just this one it's not we're not gonna not gonna bevel this I suppose you could but I don't think you need to just that sharp edge right there so control B pull back one segment done let's see what that did okay it just softened that glad smoothing in a minute let's do these edges too so inner and outer I can do these at the same time control B pull back a little bit you know, you can, don't pull back like that much, you know, like just like this, before the blue areas touch. One, I'll try two, let's see if that works for us. Okay, let's let's put smoothing on this and see how it's start, starting to look kind of nice. All right, um, now, um, let's take it off for a moment. We'll talk about that stuff in a minute. I wanna do something else though. In edit mode I want to put some kind of a design right at the end of this you know lens and I want to assume that this can kind of go in and out I don't know if that's exactly how my film sheet projector used to work or not but I'm gonna go control R click to accept and I'm gonna pull it actually I'm going to need two rings I'm gonna pull one there close to the end and I'm gonna do another one here about there what I've done is I've added two new rows here. I didn't want a row of polys right up against the end. So I put in an edge loop, that pink line there, and brought it close to the end. I put another one there. So I can select, I can go Shift, Alt, and click on a poly and get the whole row. And it's not right up to the edge. It doesn't, you know, like, it doesn't include, I don't even know if I can get all these, all of those. It's too close to the edge for what I want to do. So. Okay, shift alt and I get all of those. Now, I want to make little indentations here similar to, to these. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. To do that, I'm going to hit I for inset and I again. That insets twice and now I can move my mouse in without pressing any buttons and I can change the size of every square. I get individual squares. Now, without deselecting those, I'm going to use the extrude individual button over here in the mesh tools. I'm going to click on it and right away I'm going to push upwards a little bit. So watch this. Click it and push upwards. That will bring them in. If I pull down, it'll push them out. It's a cool effect. I'll be using that later. I'm going to push these ones in like that. And then before I lose the selection, I just want to zoom in. I'm gonna go control B, pull, and I'm gonna try to bevel like just like that. Just add a little bit there. And that's gonna give you that effect. Now let's add smoothing again. And it looks like that. Now to make it look a little bit better, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna try under the wrench, the egg modifier, the edge split tool. And that will do that effect on it. And that's what I want. I'm gonna apply that and just keep that effect. Okay, let's pull this out, make sure it's in good. And there we go. All right, so I'm gonna take a quick break and I'll be right back. All right, we're back. Well, we had a whole bunch of things I had to take care of, including my daughter and my three dogs. We've got three Jack Russell girls groceries, the wood stove, a lot of things. So uh, 
the lighting's different now because it's nighttime and uh, we're back now first thing I, I see here as I look at this is uh, I don't like the length of this at all all right looks more like a loaf of bread so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the object and I'm going to scale it in the X direction I want it quite a bit shorter than that so I'm going to go scale in the X and I'm going to bring it in like that let's try that click on that and bring it back in the X direction these guys well I joined them together all right so here's what we're going to do in order to I'm going to break them apart so I'm going to have to go into edit mode I'm going to select one little piece of that and shift select another piece of that and I'm going to go control L and that is going to select everything that's linked and I am now going to move these under a good amount because when I deselect and come out I'm going to move the whole thing forward and that may not have been enough now I'm going to do some more Right, back in edit mode, select a piece, select a piece. I'm going to zoom in and show you a bit better. Control L. Move these down in the X direction. Deselect and back in object mode. And now I'll move them forward just a little bit. Okay, so that should now be okay. Now, how does that look? Mm, still almost looks a little bit too long to me, to tell you the truth. Yeah, let's do it again. Scale in the X direction. Let's make it a little bit more compact move that in again and now we're back to doing the feet one last time select control L move deselect back to object mood mode and mood and there we go let's save it like that all right that's gonna be okay now <coughs> the implications on that is that uh, this piece is a little narrower where I put the knob but we'll uh, We'll get to that in a bit. So let's um, zoom out. Let's do this uh, this hole here. Let's work on that first of all. This is a cylinder that I'm going to use to cut. So I'm going to do a boolean. All right. So um, I'm going to come up to here and let's go in. Yeah. Let's select that face, and then I'm going to bring the 3D cursor there. So when I bring in that cylinder, it's going to go right to that spot so shift s cursor to selected deselect and back in object mode you can see my 3d cursor is there so now when i go shift a and bring in a cylinder it'll show up right there now i i don't want it in that orientation i want to rotate it around the y-axis uh, rotate y90 and scale just a global scale like that let's scale it down and move it over a little bit going to be fit roughly in there. I'm going to push it down a bit. Uh, in fact, I'm going to look at it from the front and I want it to be just about like that dipping in. And let me just have a look at this and I want it to project back to here. That's actually not a bad position. So I think I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. Now I rotated and scaled this. So I'm going to go object, apply rotation and scale for the cylinder. And now I'm going to do a Boolean. So I'm going to select my object, which is the film projector, and go Boolean difference. Okay, that's the selection you have to make. Now the object I'm going to cut with is the cylinder, so I'm going to use the eyedropper and I'm going to click on this. And I don't see anything right now, but I'm going to go ahead and click apply. And I'm going to select the cylinder and H to hide it. And it has made the little hole. Okay. Um, I don't think I'm going to need that cylinder again. Um, you know, I will actually need a cylinder. Let me bring that back. Alt H to unhide. All right, there's the cylinder. I will actually need a cylinder for this part right here. So I could set that up using this instead of bringing in a new one. Why don't I just turn it around, go rotate in the Z 90 degrees. And then I want to scale this, um, but I don't. I, in fact, I want it a bit longer. Actually, I'm not sure if I do yet, but I do want it smaller. But I don't want to change the length of it yet. I don't want to change it in the Y. So I could go Scale Shift Y, and that will prevent it from scaling in the Y. Watch this Scale Shift and Stretch Y, 
and you can see the X and the and the Z um, colors there, but not the green Y. So I can go like this and make it quite a bit smaller, and that may not be the final. Let's have a look at where that is positioned. Well, it's hard to tell in that one, but it pretty much spans the the whole. So I could I could leave it like that for the moment. In fact, we could we could work on that in this this piece. Um, I want to make this a little bit fancier, and I think I want to make it a little narrower too. So I'm going to go Scale Shift Y again, and I'm going to go like this. Okay. I'm going to zoom into it using the period key. And I'm going to go Tab into Edit Mode, and I'm going to go Control R to add an edge loop. But I want two, so I'm going to roll my mouse up. There's two. I'm going to click to select. Right click to, you know, to completely accept and finalize it, and then I'm going to scale this in the y direction. If I go scale y and pull out, it'll move those both in the y direction equally, to about there. And then I'm going to go into face select mode, or yeah, face select mode, and I'm going to sh shift alt click here and shift alt click there. All right. I'm going to extrude these outwards, but not in the Y direction, just in the X and the Z. So we're going to go E to extrude and left mouse click, scale, shift, Y. And then it'll come out like that. Nice and big. Let's deselect and go into edge selection because we're going to bevel these. Shift, alt, click that, that edge and that edge, this edge and this edge. So I've got all four of them. All right. Control B, pull back. Now, what you may or may not be seeing is that the blue and green regions are laying on the surface. I'm not able to bevel properly. Let me deselect and show you what I mean. There, the, the section was laying on the surface here. It should go equally from this green line out this way and down this way so I can generate a curve. The reason that is happening is because I rotated and scaled this and I didn't go back to object mode, object, apply, rotation and scale. If I now go back in and I've still got that selected, watch how the beveling works. Control B, pull back. You see how it, how it goes more, it more rounded? I don't know if you noticed that at all, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put two segments in here, although I know this is small. I don't need it big. Just like that. Okay. Now I'll smooth it out. Now I can put smoothing on it. That may create some <coughs> issues here. Um, <coughs> if it looks weirdly colored, you can try modifier, edge split. And I'm going to apply that. That's, that looks fine to me. I can still change the size of this. All right, well, let's continue with this piece and make these little pieces here. Now for that, I'm just gonna use a torus and cut it and just use the piece that I need. I'll show you what I mean by that. <clears throat> but I want it to come in right at this spot. So I'm gonna go Shift S, cursor to select it. So I'm gonna be in the vicinity of this when I bring in my object. I don't want it showing up over here or whatever. So I'm gonna go Shift A create a torus and it's going to come in rather large before I click anything I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change this radius and make it smaller not too small because I'm going to scale this okay that's probably good enough because I'm going to scale this and it'll get even smaller okay now I'm going to rotate this in the Y 90 so it's like that so imagine if I position this over you know like this this is not the final position but Imagine it's going to come out of that thing and it's going to go down, but it's obviously got to be a lot smaller. So uh, I'll do that in a moment. Uh, let's look at it straight on. It doesn't really matter where it's positioned to do this, as long as you can see. I'm going to go into edit mode, switch to vertex selection. Again, you could do it down here. And W, well, no, not W, Z for wireframe. Deselect. What I want is from here, this piece right down to that piece. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. And I can do this in segments. I don't have to do it all in one, so I can do that. And delete vertices. And then I can do it again to, let's say we go to there, delete vertices. So I get this 
completely vertical piece and completely horizontal. Let's go back into object mode and solid. And here it is. Now you'll notice that the origin is here at the center of the torus still, but I have just this piece. So I'm going to set the origin to the geometry and it'll pop back to there. So this is going to come out like that, but it's far too big. So I'm just going to scale and hopefully we'll get a decent size. Let's have a look at that. Uh, I'm going to try scaling it in the Y as well. And that'll change its dimensions a little bit, but all right, let's uh, scale it in the Z and then just scale in general. It's getting closer to what we want. Let's zoom in. How's that looking to you? Now I can bring it in like this as well. Let's try um, duplicating this and then rotating it around. Rotate Z180 and bringing it to the other side and see what it's like with two of them. How would that be? Mm. I'm not certain I'm crazy about that, to tell you the truth. I'm going to bring it up and see if I can scale it in the Y a bit more. Eh, that's going to bend it oddly. Hmm. Let's bring it back and have another look at it. I mean, that would do. Eh, it's pretty similar to the other one. The whole thing may be a little bit high anyhow. I think I'll move it back to here. Well, we can leave it at, like that for now. Okay. So what next? Well, we're going to need to do this section and that section too. So we're going to need some rectangles. Uh, let's see if I can get another image. There we go. So I got this piece here. I'm going to need to cut into here and then make these pieces. And then I'm going to have to do this stuff. It was a little bit complicated to do it, um, but I found a way. So for the moment, let's bring in a rectangle and put it here and do a boolean to cut out this space all right i still i've got it still selected right there so if i bring in a cube it's going to go right there that's fine let's scale it down it should be centered it's going to go roughly roughly there all right let's uh let's scale this in the z and scale it in the x yeah it'll go way over there and stick it back down again. We may actually need it a bit taller. Bring it over here and then let's see. Okay, how wide is this thing? Not that wide. Just about the width of this, maybe a bit long or wider. So let's scale it in the Y. Like this. Scale it in the X again a little bit. So that's going to be where the film, you know, will will feed through. Okay, you put you put it in here. It'll go up and it'll feed, you go push down into that thing. I don't know if, you, if you've used one of these and you know what I mean. Uh, let me just go into wireframe and see how far down this pushes. I want that farther down. I want it down like that. And let's go back into solid view and see. All right, well, we could, uh, we could certainly give this a try. And yeah, maybe even a little, a little thinner. Put it right there and give that a try. Let's give it a try. Let's select the main body, Boolean difference, and select that. Apply, take that, hide. All right, so there's my little space that the film would come. You take the film, you wrap it in, and feed it down into that, and then we go into the rest of the body. Um, I may not be putting any holes in this. Um, before I continue, I want to see if I can bevel these edges or not. So I'm going to go to edge selection and choose that edge and that and see if I get it all the way around just out at the edge. Just here. In other words, not, not that one. Let's try Control B, pull back one, two segments, see if that rounded it off properly. And it looks like it did. Looks a little bit better than it, than it was. 
All right, let's bring back that piece there because that's what I used to cut. I think I can use this as a t you know to build these pieces. So let's try that. All right, let's scale in the X to make it thinner. And kind of bring it back to the area. Let's also make it a little narrower. Scale it in the Y just a little bit so it looks like it would fit in there, but it's not super snug. So it'd be like that. All right, now. Um, I, I want it even a little thinner, scale it in the X. All right, let's bring it back up. Now I wanna do some work on this. I don't need it to go all the way to the bottom, so I'm even gonna scale it a little bit less high, if that makes sense, okay? Edit mode, no, I'm not on the correct object. There it is, edit mode, okay, deselect it. Um, I am going to add it. Add an edge loop, add two edge loops, accept that, scale it in the Y and pull it out to around there so that I have roughly equal thickness here and here. They don't have to be exact. Deselect, go into face selection, grab that face and that face, E to extrude and pull it out in this X direction, just, just a little bit like that. All these dimensions can be changed later so that this would fit in here and then I would have another one as well. And I don't want it to go too far, but that's fine. It's, it will go down to about that position. So in reality, I might have to shorten this a bit again. So let's scale in this head. Okay, now this piece um, has a hole so that uh, the light can go through because the, the film will go down. It'll be like Shift D and replicate it. And then I'm gonna rotate Z 180. So there are two of them like that, kind of like that, okay? And the film would go down in between. There is actually not quite that uh, that wide, but if I got the two of them, let's see, they fit down in there, you know, kind of like this. Okay, and the film would go down there. And there's a hole here and here so that the light can go through them. So let's make the hole. Let's bring it up. Now, I'm gonna actually delete that one for now. I just wanted to show you. So let's come into this object, edit, and let's uh, select this face and select that face. Front and back, I'll look the, at this side. Hit I to inset, pull it in, and it should have done both of them the same. And that's probably good enough for a hole. And the way that we can join these is to go um, Control E to bring up the edges menu and bridge edge loops and that will join them and create the polys on the sides and, and make a hole. So it would be like that. Now, I have some weirdly colored polys here so I'm gonna select everything and go control N so that all my polys are facing outwards. Sometimes you'll have to do that. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go object, apply. I don't know if I rotate it or not, I'm just gonna choose rotation and scale. And let's, let's choose bevel and two segments and not so much beveling. Just pull it down until you get the desired amount, like that. Let's push this back down. Like that. And let's duplicate it, Shift D. Rotate Z 180 and pull this one over. And I can leave a little bit of space to accentuate it. And that's basically it. In fact, I might even pull these up a little bit so that you can see them a bit better and it's obvious there's something there's something in there. Okay, that's that's cool. Now, voltage, no, I got no, I thought I had a cylinder or a cube, so let's bring in another cube. Scale it down to about that width. Scale it in the X. Let's bring it down here. It certainly doesn't have to be that big. Let's see how big it is. I'm gonna push this down in and back a little bit. And we are gonna create this space right in here. All right? The, and this is the, the handle that you used to, you know, it, it pulls up and you're gonna hold, hold the thing with it. 
So that's what I'm going for now. Uh, let's go into wireframe mode and see how far down that goes. That's, I'll go a little bit deeper than that. Solid mode. Okay. Now, I don't want to do this. Do I want to curve these? I don't think so. I think I'm going to do this and then we'll bevel afterwards. So let's do another Boolean. Select the body. Boolean. Difference. Select this piece. Apply. This. Hide. Okay, so that's going to be that space. <clears throat> and I think this is how I did this. Um, I am going to Alt-H, bring this back. Scale this in the X to make it a bit smaller. And I'm going to use that in a moment. Um, I'm going to copy this. It's at the exact same depth. So I like that. I'm going to scale this in the X now. No, I'm not. Uh, well, I am going to scale it, but I'm going to scale it smaller like this. I'm going to make holes. I'm going to make these holes, all right? So, and they're not going to look exactly like this, not yet. All right, so it's the same width this, as this piece, which is great. So everything's going to line up. And what I'm going to do is I want a whole bunch of these. So I'm going to use the array modifier. So select it, wrench, array, and drag this out. This is in the X, so it's the first space here. I'm not going to drag out this one, then it go off in the, in the Y direction, I guess. So I want to give some space to these. They don't have to be exact. And then I'm going to up the count, the number of them. Let's say I did that. Maybe actually I need a bit more space. A little bit like that. Yeah. All right, let's just have a look. <clears throat> I'm going to hide this, and I'm now going to select this, and I and and uh, save. I'm going to use this to cut into into this piece. So I'm going to select the body, boolean difference, and select these guys. Apply. Take these. Hide. There, I made sort of the air airflow spaces. Now. Um, I just got to think for a second. Is this what I wanted to do? No, I take it back. I want to do something a little bit different. Not much different, but a little bit. Let's see if I've gone back far enough. I have. I only want to insert these just a small amount. You'll see why in a moment. I'm just putting those in a small amount. So I'm coming back on here. Boolean, difference, those guys, apply, hide. Now, it's a smaller amount. The reason I did that is, if I now come back into the body, okay, if I now select this poly, if I delete it, X, delete face, Get out of here. I now have this piece down here and it's open to the interior <clears throat> and that's what I want. I'm going to do that for all of them. Select that face, that face, this one, this one, this one, not that one, this one, this one, and this one. Delete faces there. I've done it. Now I have the cuts into the body that I wanted. But I also need one here, all right, uh, because that's how that's how it goes. This is open uh, right there as well. And so the way I'm going to do this is, how am I going to do this? I want to cut here. I could use the knife tool to cut across, but I can't see the other side. So I am just going to take this piece and this piece, and I'm going to press H to hide. I'm going to take this piece, and this piece, and this piece, H to hide. Now I can cut across this piece, 
and make it roughly the same height as this. So I'll show you what I mean. Now I don't think I can go Control R through it. No, because I modified it. So I'm going to use the knife tool. I'm going to go K, click on this edge, drag across to this side to where it lights up, click, and then spacebar to accept. Now I don't know if I was straight in doing that or not. And the way to fix that is go to Edge so Mode, select the line, and I want all of these points, well really this point and this point, to be the same height in the Z axis, like in like in math, you know, instead of one at you know zero and the other one at you know point two or something. So I'm gonna go S Z zero. And that did move it a little bit. And now it's straight. Now I can still move this though, but it's perfectly level. Now I don't care about getting this exact, so I'm just gonna leave it there. And what I'm gonna do is in face selection mode, I'm gonna delete that face, just that face. Now, Alt H to unhide everything and deselect. And you can see that I've got a hole. Let me go back to object mode. I've got a hole here, and this area here is roughly equal to this area. Now, if I still didn't think it was enough, I still could go back into edge selection mode and I could pull it up a little bit more if that's what I wanted to do, if I needed to. Alt H. I don't think I need these anymore, so I'm going to delete them. And this was the thing I was saying I'm going to make the handle out of. Well, it's not much of a handle at this point. Uh, it's just a, a rectangle, so I move it. I just wanted to move it up. So let's do that. Um, and the way I'll do that is I'm going to scale it in the Z till it's nice and thin. Just like that. And on the underside, if I can get to it, I'm going to go into edit mode. On the underside, I'm going to go Control R, two edge loops, scale them in the Y. I can look for this end as well. Scale right, right up to the end. Because I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to select this face at the bottom and this one. And I'm going to ex extrude them downwards like that. Now they look a little bit thick. And so I could just take that face and this face. Can I just scale in the Y right now? Will it do it equally? Yeah, it will. I'm going to bend things a bit, but that's totally fine. Let's have a look at that and bring it back down. And I think I need to scale the whole thing in the Y. So it looks like it fits in there nicer. Okay, let's do object apply. Let's do a rotation and scale and then add the bevel. That looks good just like that, tell you the truth. Well, maybe a little bit less. That's fine. Okay, I can live with that. And I mean, I can, uh, let's apply that. I can bring this up and down. Now actually, it, it looks like those legs aren't long enough. The more I look at it, I mean, if I, if I put it all the way down, they touch, you know, that, the part underneath. But if I lift it up, like as if you were handling this, you know, they just, they don't reach long enough. So I, I need to, I need to edit that. So let's go into any view that works for you. And I'm going to go into wireframe mode and box select the bottoms. Now the reason I went into wireframe mode, just to show you, is if I did not on deselect, and I was in say solid mode, but I'm in edit. If I go box select, I will only select the front stuff. Well, I got actually too much there. Yeah, I guess I mean here, I go into vertex mode and then I just get the bottoms. Okay, I only get the front, not the back. So you got to do this in wireframe, and then if you box select, you get all of it. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull these right down like that. Back in a solid view. Now, I don't I don't want it up that high normally, but I want it about there. All right, but you could pull it up like that.
Okay, the next thing though is I wanna um does it need to take up the whole space? No, it doesn't take up the whole space. Let's try scale it in the X just a little bit and leave a little bit of room back there. And maybe even I want to bring it down even more. Hey, right, but I'm actually gonna be getting rid of this uh, for actually no, that's not gonna be good if we look through here, I see. Hmm. All right, so I think we're gonna have to choose a position and shorten these. Yeah, I'm gonna shorten these again, sorry about that, because they're too long now. That's all right, we're just gonna make them short like they were. A little bit of a sidetrack. I ran into problems because if I push them through too much, if they're too long, you start seeing them through here. I'll choose a position like there, and I'll leave it there and it won't be a problem. Okay, but I wanna hide this actually because I wanna look at whether or not I can bevel any of these like I did here. And we'll see, we're gonna see. Okay, edge selection, I'm gonna shift alt, click that line, that's not a good sign. I'm gonna try doing it individually. I'm just holding shift now, and shift alt was getting everything connected. Okay, and was going down here. I'm gonna see, I've got it. The, the rectangle selected. Let's see if I can bevel this properly. Control B. One, maybe I'll try two. Okay, that one worked okay. I'm gonna try to do that on all of these. Let's go back into edit mode. And it's gonna take take some time. Now if I try shift alt, oh, not that. Shift alt. See I get that. Eh? Well, I am holding down shift and I am not that one. And I'm selecting all the way around. And I want to do all of them because I want to bevel them the same amount. So I'm just trying to get all the pieces that would make up the rectangle here. Did I get that one? Oh jeez. It's getting a little tight in there. We gotta make sure we get it all, and this may not work. In which case, we'll just leave it. No, not that one. Just the rectangles. Oh, cross your fingers. First of all, cross your fingers, I got it all. All right, let's see. Control B, pull back. Oh, it's looking good, guys. Yeah, it's looking good. Just not too much. One, two. Bit smaller, deselect it, check it out. Okay, you may not notice a lot, but it just rounds it. Okay, deselect Alt H to bring that guy back. And that's what we have so far. Okay. It's time to make some focus knobs and stuff. I'm gonna do a focus knob right there. Actually, before we do that, now that we got all this, I think we should commit to this. I'm gonna select those pieces and that, and I'm gonna go Control J to join them. And that's gonna be just fine. Save. I don't need to join these things. Just looking to see if they're straight. That's fine right there. Okay, let's uh, do that. We got some other work to do down here, but I'm gonna select the body, go into edit mode, select this face, shift S, bring the cursor right to there. Got some ladybugs flying around in here. It's almost winter, They're looking for a warm place. All right, I'm gonna bring a circle into there. Shift A, circle, and I'm gonna rotate X90. Scale it down and look at, I'm gonna zoom in on that. Look at the positioning and the size. It's still too wide. So let's bring it down in size. And bring it to down there. Okay, so we're gonna build a focus knob like this. All right, it's a little small because I, sh I, I squashed this. It should still be okay. We can adjust. Let's go into edit mode. A to select, F2, 
put a face in there. Now it's just like a plane, but it's a circle. E to extrude, and let's push out in the y direction like this. All right. Okay, now I want to create this little indent thing here. So I am going to, let's zoom in on this. I'm going to press I to inset and pull my mouse. So I was outside of the stage. I to inset and pull my mouse in like this. And then E to extrude and I'm going to pull back just like that. That's good enough. Okay, so far so good. Now, to create the little grips on the knob, all right, these little things here. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm essentially going to be selecting, shift alt selecting all these polys, but I don't want them from this point to this point, the entire length. I want a bit of a buffer zone on either side, and I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to put in two edge loops by going control R, rolling my mouse up once, accepting, and then scale in the Y to move both of these out at the same time to about there, not the exact end, but pretty close. Deselect, back to face mode. Now if I select these, you can see a roll of po row of polys on either side, like a buffer zone, because I'm going to do a little technique on these, and I don't want it to come right to the very edge, because I'm going to want to bevel this too a little bit. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use inset, and I'm going to hit it twice. I'm going to go I, click I. No, I didn't want to click in between. I take it back. I, 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 Captain, just I twice. Now I'm going to move my mouse in a little bit to make these spaces a bit smaller. I can go like out, or I can go in just like about that. And I click to accept. I've got all these poly, sort of these little rectangles selected like that. All right. So once again, I'm going to back out of that, select them, I, I, and then pull your mouse in. With those still selected, I'm going to come over here to extrude individual, and I'm going to click this button, and I'm going to pull downwards a little bit while looking at this. So click and pull down. And see the way they're coming out like that? Now don't go too crazy. Something like that. Click. But don't lose the selection yet. All right. I'm going to bevel now. All right. So I'm going to go Control B, pull. It's going to go like that. And I'm going to give one segment. I probably don't even need it. Deselect and come out and look at what, what it's done. All right. All right. So far, so good. Let's go back in. And let's go into edge selection and let's grab this edge and this edge and we're going to bevel just a little bit <coughs> because <coughs> we can't <coughs> sorry we can't pull back too much okay i'm going to bevel just a little bit we can't pull back too much so here i go just like that one two make it a little bit smaller there now it's rounded a bit now we're not done with this I'm gonna pull it out I'm gonna create a little stock on the on the in, inside of it and in face selection hit I to inset and pull it in a little ways E to extrude and pull it out like that this part will join to the body so I got a little bit of a buffer zone it'll be like that okay Okay, now we can smooth this if we want. Hit smoothing. And if it looks too weird, we can try edge split. And that looks just fine. Let's leave it at that. Now, eh, I'm not crazy about the width of that end, but that no one's gonna see it, so. That's good there. We can leave that one there. How are we doing? It looks a bit small, but. I want to make this piece. I want to make this piece right here. And uh, I just did something ridiculous. So I'm going to do it again. Shift A, circle, rotate X90. That was somewhat ridiculous. All right. Let's do it. Add a face, the extrude. Okay, now, I'm going to be 
extruding these wing-like structures in a moment. But first, I'm going to add two edge loops, scale them in the wire like I showed you before. Ah, and of course, I've got a problem. I need to be on, make sure you're on median point. I tried something with individual origins a moment ago. Come up to there. Okay, yeah, let's look at this now. All right, I want to select the four, who do I want? Six, I might go for six faces right on the side. So all six faces and the other exactly, exactly on the side. And I'm not always sure I got them right. And so the way I'm gonna know is I'm going to hit extrude region, but I need to be on individual origins. So let's try extrude region and pull down. Yeah, it looks like I got them. Pull down a ways like this. And that gives me this little lip there in the front and in behind. That's why I added the edge loops here, okay? And um, I can still scale in the X. No, I can't in individual origins. Can I get rid of individual median point? I'm sure I can scale in the X now if I want to pull them out more. Okay, so, but I want these ends to be straight, not curved. So I'm gonna go scale X zero. And I'm gonna do the same for this one. Select all these polys, scale X zero. All right. Now that I've done that, I'm going to re-grab all of these as well. And I've got these on the other side. And I'm going to go, am I on individual origins? Yes. I'm going to scale them in the Y direction, up and down. and make them smaller, scale, sorry, Z direction. Like that. Good. With that done, we are going to go object, apply, rotation, and scale and see if the bevel tool is gonna to work, and it does. Uh, like this, and they're not gonna to look too great yet. It'll look better soon. Okay, let's go like that for the moment. Let's select this inner face and go I to inset, bring it in like that, E to extrude, and bring it in. Select and have a look at our guy. There we go. I don't have to apply that yet. It's looking good. Now let's move this out and think about what we need to do next. Now, and this is a separate piece, but I want it to be in the right position. So I'm going to build this cylinder and extrude out like that, just like I did here. But I'm gonna use, I think, a piece of this to build it. Why not? Let's take this, by the way, and move this to another layer to make it easier. All right, so I just select it, hit M and move it to another layer. Okay, let's go into edit mode. I'm gonna select that face. And actually, I'm gonna do this in a second. I'll take a quick break, I'll be right back. All right, so as I was saying, I want to create this back you know, lever, okay, we'll call it a lever, and I want it to be the approximate size of this one. And so the way I'm gonna do this is, let's zoom in on that. I'm gonna grab that circle, which is essentially the, the, the same diameter as this, and I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna use it to build the other lever. So I'm gonna go Shift D to copy, and then I wanna make it its own object. So I'm gonna go P to separate it, um, from this current object by selection. So P, enter. Now come out of edit mode into object mode and I can select just that piece. See, I move it out. All right, it's just like a flat plane again. It still has the bevel modifier that this one had, so that'll be good. So let's, let's make this. Let's go into edit mode, select that face, E to extrude, pull it back. Doesn't have to be the exact same width. I'll do something like that. And I'm gonna look at it based on, hmm. Well, maybe I'll look at it from the top. There we go, okay? And I'm gonna select one, two, three, four, five, six, equal around that middle section. Now I can look at it from the front. 
And for this one, I can just straight extrude upwards. E to extrude, pull it up. Again, it doesn't have to be the exact same distance as these, doesn't really matter. And let's straighten that out. So I want all these points at the same Z position. Okay, look at the blue arrow. I want them all straight. So I'm going to go scale Z0 or SZ0, like that. While they're still selected, let's pull them in along the X. And let's also make sure, by the way, we're back in median point. Scale in the X. Pull them in until you like the taperedness of it all. And we have that. Now, before we go any further, let's have a look. Yeah, the bevel is still there. And hide this one here. And I think I will uh, create that center indent. So go I to inset, bring it in, E to extrude, and pull it back a bit. And let's see how Alt H, let's see how these two things are lining up. Now, they're kind of, I believe they're, they're kind of attached, um, although they move independently. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to inset it like that. A nice small diameter that would fit in the middle of that. I'm going to go E to extrude. I'm going to pull this back just a little bit like that. I'll bring this one forward so it kind of fits in. Okay, does that look like it goes on the inside? You know, it doesn't really look like it goes on the inside. Not that this detail is going to be very visible. So I'm going to make this smaller. The way I'm going to do that is I need to select all of these polys. If I just scale this in, watch what's going to happen. I'm going to scale it, but not in the Y direction, just in the X and the Z. If I go scale shift Y, it's just going to go down like that. I don't want that. I don't know if you can hear my baby monitor there. You hear a little bit of activity. Okay. I need to select these polys as well. Now I can do it by hand, or I can just select this one and go Control Plus. If I continue to go Control Plus, it'll just keep selecting. You can also go Control Minus if you get too much, like I got too much. Just that. I should now be able to go Scale Shift Y and make it smaller like that. And that's what I wanted to do so that it looks like it fits in the middle of that and I can still see the ring around it a little bit yeah in fact that's almost too small but that's going to be just fine okay cool now this one here has an additional circle on there I'm gonna have to build that as another piece so I mean you know we could just take what we've got um, let's hide this one. Oh, did I move it? Yeah, I moved it. We could just take a piece from here. We could grab that piece. Shift D. P to make its, its own selection. So we come out and have this piece. And it's already in the same orientation and decent size. We can make this a bit smaller. And move it up to here. And now I can edit this. Select. E to extrude, let's bring it back. Now some of these polys look weird, they're dark. All right, that means they're not, they're facing inwards instead of outwards. So I'm gonna select, deselect, select it all, control N, and that flips them. Now they're all right. But actually I should have this around here, or at least here, and then I can go scale in the Y, pull back to, you know, it doesn't really matter exactly. Let's see, what if it was there? Is that too big? Scale shift Y. I want it smaller like that. Okay. And maybe even higher. Let's make the indent. And by the way, this has inherited the bevel as well. I didn't set. Just a little bit. This is a smaller one. And zoom in. E extrude, pull it back a little bit, like that, deselect, and let's have a look. Oh, so now I see that I pulled in and I've got I've got this part show, so let's just pull it out a little bit. Like that. And if you want, you can scale the whole thing in the Y so it, you know, it's more even. That's probably good. Let's Alt H bring everything back. And this is what we've got. 
Maybe this needs to go in more. I don't know. I'm okay with it though. Let's uh, let's take this, select both of them, and M to move back to the first layer. Click on the first layer. And did I not get everything? Maybe I didn't. Let's move this back to the first layer as well. I guess I didn't get everything. Okay. Let's consider joining those together. Control J. Let's apply the bevel. Let's apply the bevel. And maybe I'll lock these a little bit tighter. And then I'm going to take both of them and move them towards the back. And I realize now I actually need a little piece extending off this to the body, just like we did down here. This area touches the body, so I'll come in, grab that, I to inset. Nice, that was a smaller diameter. And just make a little piece there, and then now I can take the two, and they sort of collide with the body like that. Okay, you can bring them closer to the body if you want. So they're a little bit off the body though. Before I join these, I just have to decide if I like the orientation of having them like that, or if I want to maybe rotate this one. Um, yeah, I will rotate, rotate Y, and just turn it a bit. And maybe that's good. So let's join these together, Control J. And I think we've got it done. I can still scale this if I think it's too big and reposition it. Let's make sure it's touching the body though. Okay, well, there's another piece here that we can add. We're getting close to close to the end. I still got to do a little bit of work at the front. Um, there's, a, there's a piece that goes here. I just did it as a little indent like that. Look, we can do something like that though, very simple. Shift A, bring in a plane, rotate X90, and scale it. And bring this up and out a little ways. And just shape it, scale it in the X. I'm going to want this, you know, somewhere in this area. Alright, maybe I'll have it there. Let's bring it out a bit. Edit it. E to extrude, bring it back a bit. Now you'll notice some weird coloration. If I go this way, all the polys are the same shade. If I go this way, this one is flipped. That's okay. Just deselect, reselect, control in. Makes them all okay. So now I've got that, and I'm going to bevel the edges. Grab that edge and this edge, bottom edge there. Uh-oh, can't see the other one. Let's hide this. Back into edit mode, and that edge, not that edge. There we go, control B, pull back, add a few segments, it's nicely rounded. Am I going in the wrong direction? No, it was that far away actually, okay touch this we don't need to go too far in let's alt H and bring that back just so I see the location okay oh I got them both selected huh. okay I'm gonna do a boolean now I just want this lightly tapping that so it doesn't go too deep let's try it select the body boolean difference and select that apply Select it and hide it. Okay, didn't go in too far. I like that effect though. Alt H, select this and delete it. And that's it. That's that part. So far so good. It takes a while, but we're getting there. Okay, let's let, we gotta cut cut out this part here. Okay. So we're gonna do a cut in the front. Let's see, we can see a front view. You know, we're gonna cut down there. So this is where the film is going to go in and we only have a couple more things we got that to we cut that we're going to make that and we'll do a little switch on the back and we're done all right okay so we're going to cut about halfway in there and up a little ways into that 
Okay, so that's our front view, <laughs> front side view. Um, I want to bring in a cube, but I want to bring it in right there. So I'm going to select in face select mode that poly, Shift S, cursor to select it. I'll always do that. Okay, my 3D cursor is right there. Shift A, mesh, cube, scale it down, brings it right, right there. That's now this is going to cut in to there as well. And I'm going to scale this in the Z. And that's probably a decent location right there. Question is going to be how wide to make this. And that. All right. Well, I am going to think about this. The film is going to go in there. Or it's actually come out. It's up there. It goes down past the light, and it comes out there and it collects in that thing. I'm just going to make it that wide. That's fine. Okay, let's look in wireframe. Make sure we've gone in, which we have. Back in a solid view. Okay, so we're going to do a boolean with this now. I'm not going to be able to bevel this area very well, so I'm just going to go go for it. Boolean difference cube and apply hide and we've cut in quite a distance I am now thinking I don't want to go that deep so I'm going to backtrack a little ways and I'm going to pull this out and then put it in again I may have to go that far all right let's try this again may not look that much different than it did a minute ago hide yeah it's pretty similar that's okay now so there's that cutaway and then it then there's another cutaway uh, inside that so I'm gonna go alt H and bring it back I'm gonna scale this down a bit and uh, I'm gonna scale it to Z pull it down and now I'm gonna push it in so it goes deeper into the body and this can go quite far in let's try it in that position select boolean difference this guy apply hide uh, I don't quite like the width so I want to redo that scale this in the Y I want it a bit narrower than that now I could be rounding these corners as well I'll show you what that would look like. Let's, before I do that though, oops, apply rotation and scale. Let's grab an edge mode, that edge, this edge, and the bottom one, just like that. Control B. It's a little bit of rounding like that. Often I'll do that when I do my booleans. I'll stick that in like that. Select the body, difference, select this. Now have a look at what the hole is like. All right, you get that effect. I think I'll, maybe I'll stick with that. Okay, Alt H to bring that thing back and I can delete that. So there's the cutaway in the front. So we're gonna go ahead and make the uh, little cylinder thing that holds the, f the film when it as it comes through and it comes out now I'll show you how I decided to I was going to do this uh, I still got my 3d cursor there which is roughly where I want it so I'm going to bring in a circle shift a mesh circle rotate x90 okay now I'm going to scale it and I'm going to move it and scale it until I generally like what it's going to look like I can reposition all this now. I'm gonna start with that. Okay, so here's the plan. Look at it exactly from the side. Move it wherever you need to, whoops. Wherever you need to so you can see it. Go into edit mode and vertex and deselect. I want sort of a half of a circle and then I want it to come out and it's gonna go up like that. All right, let's just have a look at it. See, sort of like this and go up. And the way I figured I would do this is by box selecting 
a bunch of these vertices. Let's get rid of those first of all. You see I've got sort of a circle here and it would come out and I want this to go up like that. So I could leave that one there and hit E to extrude and accept and then G to go and then I'm just gonna drag. I could do that, although I don't know that I like that much of a incline. So I'm gonna box select that and box select that. I'm gonna get rid of those ones and I'll just start again. In fact, maybe I'll box select this one and deselect that and delete that one and start from here. E to extrude, G to go, and just come out like that. So it's kind of like a toboggan almost. I'm roughly following the trajectory, roughly. All right, it doesn't really matter how long it is. Something like that. And yeah, I'll leave, I'll leave all those. So I'm gonna eight, uh, eight to select them all. Look at it from the side, E to extrude, and I'm gonna extrude it out like that. Now I'm getting some weird discoloration, so I'm gonna select it all, control N, see if that does anything. Doesn't really matter because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add solidify because that means it's so thin and that will help right there. I'm gonna bring up the thickness a bit like that. And let's have a look at this. Set the origin of geometry, push it right in the middle and bring it here and then sort of slide it in. Say, okay, I think it's a bit, a bit too wide or it's not in the right spot. A little bit wide anyhow, so scale it in the Y just a little bit. Like that, you can push it in more. And I know this piece is going inside there, but that's all right. Oh geez, maybe the whole thing is too big, so we can scale it down a little bit like that. Bring it in. Okay, that could kind of work. Let's do a little bit more on this. Let's go ahead and apply that solidify and then go into edit mode, control R, two, okay, roll your mouse up to get two, accept, scale it in the water, pull it out just like we've done many times, just like that, okay? I'm gonna go back into face select mode and I'm gonna shift select those and shift select those. Okay, now, that's what I want, right? Let's try, Okay, I'm gonna extrude this, but I want to extrude. If I just go E to extrude, what am I gonna extrude like that way? No, or, or that way? That looks weird, kind of cool, but weird. What I wanna do is I want it all, all of those. Can I, uh, let me try region actually, and pull down. So you know, that's no good, that's no good. Okay, so. I'm going to try, now that I've hit E to extrude, Alt S and pull upwards, downwards, try different ways, downwards. That scales them along their normals. So this one's going to go up like that, this one's going to go up like that, this one like that, and it's all, they're all going to go equally out along their normals. So I'll, I'll do that again far back I can go okay that's what I've got okay I've got the rows okay so we're gonna do this again select shift select them all I'm gonna hit E to extrude and accept and then I'm just gonna go instead of just S I'm gonna go alt S and then I'm gonna pull down no up yes it's gonna do that get that effect okay now I could try to bevel it but beveling is going to be a very weird it's going to do weird things to this so I could try subdivision surface and that actually does a nice job of what for what I want so now I'm going to move this back in maybe down maybe out that's what I'm gonna get okay I don't have to apply this right now now if I wanted to scale this in the Z direction only would that be a crime no I don't think so 
All right. I'm not sure I really like that. I don't think that was necessary. Okay, so the film loads here and goes down through here and collects in here. And as you turn this to advance the frame, it collects more and more and more and you take it out of that. All right. Well, we have only one more piece that I want to add to this. And that is a switch at the very back. So select the body. Let's put select that poly. Shift S, cursor selected and come out. Let's bring in a circle. It's right where I need it. Let's uh, move it out actually. <laughs> scale it down. We can bring it a little bit closer to get the sense of the scale. Zoom in. All right, I'll give it a little bit more. Edit mode, select F to make a face, E to extrude. Bring it up a little bit. Control B to Pull back and bevel one. That's it for that piece right there. All right. And I'm going to shift S, cursor selected on that because I'm now going to bring in one more object, which is a cube. And it'll be huge. Scale it down. Bring it up, position it. I'm going to scale this in the X. I could build this actually sideways, and maybe I will instead of rotating. So. Let's scale it in the Y. Let's just build it in the right orientation first in the first place. Plop it in there. We'll scale it in the X as well at first. We're going to expand it in a minute. Select that top poly there. And pull it up. Let's scale this in the X and it'll go out like that. Not too crazy, but a little bit crazy. Let's have a, just have a look at this. Okay, that's maybe a little bit much. A little bit down like that. Now I'm gonna try and just add the bevel, and that looks just fine right there. That could be smoothed. Um, and what we'll do though is we'll put this, we'll rotate this in the X, we'll put it over like that, and bring it down. Mm. I'm just wondering if it's. I guess it's pro well yeah. let's 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 make it a little bit narrower at the bottom actually edit mode select that let's scale it in the X and do it like that touch down scale it in the X to shift it over make sure it's in This piece looks a bit too big to me now, so I'm going to scale that down. Okay, let's go ahead and join these two together. And let's position this. Rotate in the Y. Like that. And you can always switch this to normal. Then it'll make it a little bit easier to manipulate this. Scale in the Y a bit more. That's probably good. All right, and that is basically that. Um, I think that's probably all that I wanted to do with this. You could, I could try, could I try uh, taper? I'd have to move a few things around. I can, sh I can turn that on and off. Decide how much that skews things, if at all. Do more if I want. This poor knob 
up here. everything is attached to the body properly and that stuff will be here just repositioning a few things there and back a bit okay all right and then that's pretty much it um, you can set this at a hundred and do a quick OpenGL render and that's what you'll get you could try different materials if you so uh, choose if you like that look